I recently finished a project in collaboration with Adobe as one of their creative residents. I pitched them to send me to the Bahamas to make some really fun videos in the ocean and they said yes and now we're here. In total, I made four videos documenting my process and learning underwater photography, sailing from Florida to the Bahamas, learning how to spearfish. It was a really, really fun project. So today I want to tell you guys how I made that. The goal with a video like this is number one, to inspire you to go get yours. The internet is an amazing place. Right now, the Adobe Residency Community Fund, community, I just put like six Ds in community. The Adobe Residency Community Fund is still open and it's open until May 2021, I believe. I'll leave information in the description below. The second goal with this video is to get your wheels turning. So if you do have that little itty bitty baby of an idea, this will help you expand on that. So let's break this down into three different sections, the pre-production, the production, and the post-production. James and I have attempted to do bigger projects like this in the past and they weren't always a screaming success, but the good thing about those is we take everything that we've learned from those non-screaming successes and we apply them to this trip in hopes of making it more of a screaming success. So before the trip, we have overall planning meetings where it's like we're mapping out the course of these next couple videos that we're making. And today, now that it is day one of the trip where we actually have to execute and we can't just arbitrarily plan things, we're having individual day planning meetings where we map out each day. The pre-production involves a lot of planning, a lot of just sitting down, brainstorming, dreaming. My husband James plays a big role in a lot of my projects for a couple different reasons. He's a photographer, he's a filmmaker, he helps me get the content. So together we did a lot of storyboarding. Now a lot of people will kind of go with their storyboard from like A to Z and that's their video. That's not how I make videos. Most of my storyboards change all of my storyboards change, but at least I have that backbone to fall on if I find myself not knowing what the heck I'm doing. So I've brainstormed, I'm inspired, I'm just so fired up, ready to create, and then we get to production. <laughs> It's the next day. Yesterday, my neighbors decided it would be a fantastic idea to play extremely loud music in the middle of me filming. So here I am. Production is really, really fun. This is where I get to explore and film and just all of the things. <laughs> what are you thinking, Christina? I think we need to live on a boat now. You like this? I'm not mad about it. Could this be your apartment? This, I could deal with this as a tiny home. Okay. But in order to have a successful production, I've learned a couple key things to keep everything rolling smoothly. One of those things, always make sure you know which batteries are and are not charged. The way that we do that is we actually put a piece of washi tape on one side of the battery and that universally means that that battery is charged and whenever that battery dies, we switch the washi tape to the other side of the battery and that's how we know that battery is dead. That's just a little filming hack, but in terms of the actual filming process, it's really important to make sure that you get establishing shots. Establishing shots are just those nice big vast shots that gives the viewer an idea of where you are and what you're doing. I can't tell you how many times I get into an edit and all I have is just B-roll of the area and I don't have a solid established shot. So making sure that I get establishing shots, super important. Also super important for the type of filming that I like to do is just making sure that I'm documenting my thoughts throughout the process. So sometimes I'll write little notes, but more times than not, I'll make sure that I vlog it. That way, number one, I'm capturing exactly what I'm feeling in the moment. That way, when I get to the edit, sometimes a month after I film, I know exactly what I was thinking. And if I decide to re-record those thoughts as a voiceover, I'll do that. When James and I are out shooting, we are moving quickly, both mentally and physically. So physically, obviously we're running around. James is tossing me a battery. I'm tossing him a camera. I'm taking a camera from him sometimes. That's us moving quick physically. Whenever we're moving quick mentally, that involves a lot of pivoting and being okay with scrapping an entire video project just to make sure 
that you get the best video possible. With this past trip, I pivoted a good bit because I didn't want to squeeze something that wasn't there and come out with a video that was like a grade D. I want to make grade A videos. So pivoting was really crucial to making all of four of these videos. All of that obviously involves a lot of communication between James and myself if he's helping me film. So communication is super key if you're working with somebody else. Now let's talk about post-production. Post-production is the part where you really need to have your crap together. Whenever I'm hiring an editor, the first thing that I speak with them about is organization and file structure. So I'm gonna start from the top, starting with the Creative Cloud. The Creative Cloud is where I keep all of the things that I use over and over and over again. I keep my brand assets in there, my music, any transitions, let all of that stuff stay in the Creative Cloud. I think in order of the things that I need fundamentally. If I'm gonna start off on a project, I need all my brand assets, like my logos, my colors, the fonts, and all of that stuff. So I put that as zero, zero, underscore, brand assets, underscore, red. The next thing that I need over and over and over again, right off the top, is audio, so music. and. I'll go into my audio folder and you see I use music bed the most, then epidemic, art list comes after that, independent artist, then I'll have my sound effects and then kind of random ones like audio tool, which is something that we used in 2014, and then James music, because James is out here being a producer. This is yes, I am. this is his little music maker, and it's got no, he makes music. This is essentially the file structure that I use for every single folder on my computer. The reason that I did it this way was once I got into Premiere, this is a lot of information, I needed to have the most organized project file the world has ever seen because there's there's a lot going on in this project. So in Premiere, if you look, all the bins reflect all of the folders in Finder. That's very important because I need to be able to find things at the drop of a dime. If you open up footage, you'll see everything again reflects it to the T. I then began to organize all of my footage in Premiere. I like to color code based off of frame rate and camera. That way when I drop it onto the timeline, I know exactly what type of footage I'm working with, if I can slow it down, if it's a GoPro, if it's a drone. When we're working with a really dynamic set of cameras, it can be extremely confusing if all of the footage is the same color in Premiere. So color coding based off of frame rate and the camera saves your life. The moral of the story here is that organization is is so key from start to finish. You have to make sure that you plan your project. You have to make sure that you have your head on straight when you're shooting your project. And then in post-production, you have to make sure that everything is organized. That way that you don't miss anything that you filmed in your edit. That's it for this video. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully it got some wheels turning on how you can be more organized and more efficient on your bigger projects or on some projects that you want to make bigger projects. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to comment them, comment them below or DM me on Instagram or Twitter. I'm happy to chat over there. With all of that said, I'm sweaty and I'm done talking. So I hope you have a fantastic day. Bye.